Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and we are continuing our series on precocious puberty and today we are continuing talking about central precocious puberty and the causes of this condition and um, this video is going to be pretty long today because I'm going to go into a lot of depth so make sure you are up to date on all of your uh, hormone videos. Go back and watch those because if you have not watched the other hormone videos uh, you will be very very lost. Anyway, um, we're talking about central precocious puberty, which, as I mentioned last time, is caused by an increased level of GnRH or an increased level of FH, FSH and LH. Uh, so we are going to go over our little diagram again just to review. We have our hypothalamus, which produces GnRH, which travels to the anterior pituitary, producing LH and FSH, which then causes the ovary to produce estrogen and progesterone and the testis to produce testosterone. And so we're going to talk today about how this happens. How do we get an increased level of GnRH? And in most cases, we don't know. Most cases are idiopathic. So uh, idiopathic just means that we don't have an association with um, any other underlying pathology. Um, so in 80 to 90% of those assigned female at birth who have precocious puberty are idiopathic in their mechanism. And then 25 to 85%, 25 to 80% of those assigned male uh, also have an idiopathic ideology. So we don't really know uh, what underlying condition would be associated with these cases. Um, so in that case, if we are going to treat uh, precocious puberty with Luperlide, which is one of our puberty blockers, uh, since most cases are idiopathic, can we just give them a puberty blocker and send them on their way? No, we cannot do that uh, because there are plenty of other underlying conditions that are more serious and do require additional intervention. And so we need to do a thorough workup uh, on every child that presents with precocious puberty to make sure that it's not any of these other conditions. And especially this next one is very, very important to rule out and that is central nervous system tumors. So uh, if you have tumors that secrete GnRH, uh, that can cause precocious puberty because it will stimulate this entire pathway to happen. And the most common uh, tumor of the nervous system that you see in children uh, that causes precocious puberty is called a homartoma, uh, specifically of the tuber scenarium, which is a part of the hypothalamus. And a homartoma is a tumor that uh, is caused by tissue that is from one part of the body that is now found in a different part of the body. Uh, you see this a lot in the lungs, especially with like liver tumors. Um, but in this case, you basically have uh, tissue from the hypothalamus that produces GnRH that is producing GnRH outside of the, the hypothalamus. And you could see how this could be a problem because now you're getting unregulated uh, secretion of GnRH. Um, other tumors that can cause this are astrocytomas, which are uh, glial tumors, so the support uh, structure of the brain and uh, the nervous system uh, can produce GnRH sometimes. Uh, also ependymomas are another glial tumor that can occasionally produce GnRH or cause some kind of impingement because ependymomas are known for getting very, very large and uh, impingement can cause weird things to happen with the hypothalamus and with GnRH. Uh, and then one tumor that especially we need to rule out uh, is optic nerve gliomas, because if you have an optic nerve glioma, um, chances are very high that you have a condition called neurofibromatosis, which is a, a genetic condition that is associated with a lot of tumors. Um, and that needs to be um, ruled out as well. Although um, optic nerve gliomas have a lot of other complications associated. Obviously, you don't want to have tumors of your optic nerve that can cause blindness and um, other such issues. So precocious puberty might not be the uh, worst thing on your list for a lot of these conditions. Um, homartomas are usually benign. Uh, so you might not see any serious, serious complications with that uh, unless it gets really big. But optic nerve gliomas, ependymomas, astrocytomas, you definitely want to be careful about malignancy for those. Uh, but what else besides tumors can cause precocious puberty? Uh, well, also, uh, if you're going to treat these tumors, uh, oftentimes you are going to use irradiation. And funny thing is, irradiation can cause precocious puberty. So whether you have a tumor uh, that causes the precocious puberty or if you irradiate the tumor, uh, that can also 
cause precocious puberty. So that can cause a tricky situation if you're trying to treat one of these tumors. Um, also, other CNS conditions. So other things that can cause impingement within the brain, such as hydrocephalus, which is an increase in cerebrospinal fluid inside the skull that can cause precocious puberty, trauma to the brain, um, congenital malformations can also contribute to this. Uh, but apart from these uh, neurological conditions, you can have genetics contribute to precocious puberty. So there are two types of gene categories that kind of play into this. Um, the first type is a gain of function mutation, and this is exactly how it sounds. If you have a gene that gets a mutation that makes the gene work extra hard, uh, it's going to have extra production. That is a gain of function. And so this gene, KISS1, uh, KISS peptin 1, um, is essential for production of GnRH and also for puberty initiation. There are lots of studies that point to KISS-1 being relevant in causing puberty to start. And so if you have uh, a gain of function in your puberty initiation, of course, you could see how this might cause precocious puberty. Um, and then the other category of gene mutations is a loss of function mutation. And this is usually with regulatory genes. So if you have a gene that's supposed to stop puberty or prevent puberty from happening and you lose that gene, then you've lost your regulation. And when you've lost regulation, you cause stimulation. Uh, so MLKRN3 and DLK1 um, both are responsible for repressing puberty initiation. So they're kind of the anti-KISS-1. Um, they uh, are both associated with the onset of menarche, which is the first puberty that someone assigned female uh, has. So um, if you are losing regulation of Menzies and you're losing regulation of puberty initiation, you're going to have early onset puberty. So this makes sense. Uh, but something that is not really important to understanding precocious puberty, but is just kind of a cool fact, uh, is that you can only you can only get these two gene mutations from your father. You cannot get them from your mother uh, due to a phenomenon called imprinting. This is something that we see uh, with conditions such as Prader-Willi or Angelman syndrome. Um, there are certain regions of your chromosome that uh, if you have a mutation, you only inherit it from uh, one parent. And specifically, Prader-Willi uh, is inherited from the father. And these two genes are associated with the Prader-Willi syndrome critical region. So if you are inheriting um, this mutation, it's going to be from your father. Uh, if you, your mother has this mutation, you are not going to get it. Uh, it's a weird thing. I, will, I can maybe do videos on that later. It's not super relevant to anything else on my channel. But I did think it was a cool fact to mention. Um, the next thing uh, is a really fascinating mechanism as well for a cause of precocious puberty. Um, so let's say we have somebody with previous sex steroid exposure. So uh, McCune Albright syndrome is an example of this. We haven't covered that one, but we have co covered congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So if you remember, if you have adrenal glands that are hyperfunctional, they are producing an excessive amount of sex steroids. You're going to see effects primarily in um, a children who are assigned female at birth because they're going to get masculinization. Um, but we get an increased level of estrogen and progesterone uh, or testosterone in, in those cases um, due to aromatization of the testosterone uh, since you're producing androgens in the adrenal gland. Um, but this by itself would be a peripheral precocious puberty, right? Because if it's caused by your adrenal gland, that is peripheral to the nervous system. So how does this contribute to central precocious puberty? And this goes back to that regulatory mechanism. So this actually happens due to a rebound after you treat the initial condition. So if you have congenital adrenal hyperplasia and you have high levels of testosterone and then high levels of aromatization to estrogens, you are signaling, if you remember from previous videos, high levels of these sex steroids uh, cause negative feedback, so feedback inhibition back to the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary, causing a decrease in the amount of GnRH. 
right? So then let's think through this really quickly. Uh, so if we have now, so we've treated this person with congenital adrenal hyperplasia, we've treated them. So they have a normal level of ENP, normal level of testosterone. Okay, cool. Uh, but then we lose our feedback inhibition, right? Because if we inhibit the inhibition, what do we get? Stimulation. That is right. If we inhibit inhibition, we cause stimulation of GnRH, we have high levels of GnRH, and so now we had a peripheral precocious puberty, and now we have a central precocious puberty. So I hope that that mechanism made sense for you all. I know this video went into a lot of detail and a lot of pathology that many of you might not be familiar with, so I hope this was enjoyable for you. Um, please like this video. Uh, comment, leave your questions down below. I'm happy to answer them. Next time, we're going to talk about peripheral precocious puberty, and I will see you all next time.